But first, let's get to your questions. Our first comes from Sawyer, who writes, Dear Dr. Ryder, I am the owner of an arcane bookstore in California, and recently a customer told me about a pamphlet that had circulated the area in the early 1900s called The Rat Catcher's Hymn. He provided no details beyond the title and the time of its appearance, so I was wondering if perhaps you've heard of it. I have heard of The Rat Catcher's Hymn, Sawyer. And I'm not surprised your customer mentioned the piece of music, but did not produce a copy. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of false documents from the turn of the last century floating about that are said to be the original, despite the fact that it is said to be destroyed. Shortly into the 20th century, San Francisco and nearby areas were struck with rat infestations. Many of these communities treated it as a public health crisis and paid rat catchers to do their work. But Faro, California, did not follow suit. Faro was a gold rush town, one of the most profitable, in fact. Dozens found their fortune there and then kept their wealth to themselves. They built mansions and gardens and theaters. They spared no expense when it came to the construction of their luxuries. When the rats came to Faro, a San Francisco rat catcher offered his services. The people of Faro gladly accepted his help, but said they would not pay unless he got rid of every single rat. The rat catcher was said to be the best there was in all of California, and although taken aback by this condition, he agreed all the same. Weeks passed, and the rat catcher went before the mayor of Faro and proclaimed he'd killed every last rat. But the mayor said he could still hear rats and refused to pay. The rat catcher attempted to do his work further, but found no rats. He went to the town council and asked for his payment. They, too, told him that they could also still hear rats. And so, he would not receive any payment. It soon became an expression in the town to say, I can still hear the rats, as a way of saying you'd tricked someone. The people of Pharaoh thought themselves very clever in outwitting this poor rat catcher. He disappeared, and soon they forgot all about him. A year went by, and all the wealthy residents of Faro were gathered in their opera hall, prepared to hear a skilled violinist who was said to have trained somewhere out east. But when it came time for the performance to begin, it was the rat catcher who stepped onto the stage. In one hand he held a violin, in the other his rat-catching tools. He placed a single sheet of music on a music stand and said to the crowd, I am a fair man. I will give you this one last chance to pay the money you owe. Someone from the crowd shouted, I can still hear the rats, at which the audience laughed. The rat catcher gave a solemn nod and placed the violin on his shoulder. He played a song then, one I cannot describe, for I've never heard the piece, and never wished to. Several minutes in, and the people of Pharaoh felt sick. Their skin itched. Some fled their seats and sprinted to the doors, but found them locked. Soon after, they were all doubled over in terrible pain. None could recognize their own screams. Their voices matched those of giant rats. Their bodies shifted, changed. 
Their bones shrank and fur forced itself out of their skin. Their faces became those of rodents. Though the change only partially occurred, they resembled half rats, half humans. They would have continued to fully transform, but someone jumped onto the stage and took the sheet music from the rat catcher and ripped the paper to pieces. Without the music to guide him, the rat catcher put his violin down and picked up his rat catching tools. Though catching might be a misleading word here, as they were truly tools for butchering rats. And so the rat catcher slowly went from row to row of the opera hall and killed every last rat in Pharaoh. Now, I'm not sure who could possibly have heard him, but it's said that before he left the opera hall, the rat catcher asked aloud, Do you still hear rats? And when only silence answered him, he disappeared. The story leaves many questions that have caused immense speculation over the years. Where did the rat catcher get the music he played, which became known as the rat catcher's hymn? Some believe he traveled east and made a deal with Gilman Halifax, the first traveling salesman. Halifax was rarely seen at the turn of the last century, but during this period he still attempted new ventures. Others have speculated the rat catcher visited the veiled prince of St. Louis, and it was from him that he obtained the song. This was the period when the veiled prince was most active after all, and his name is associated with so many worse things. But the truth is unknown. After word got out of what happened in Pharaoh, tradesmen across Northern California who were stiffed by the rich, not paid, or had the quality of their work challenged, suddenly had a new weapon against their wealthy customers. These tradesmen would fabricate false versions of the rat catcher's hymn and send pamphlets to their clients threatening them, telling them if they did not pay, there would be consequences. Thank you for listening to A Voice from Darkness. That was Kristen Holland as Dr. Malcolm Ryder. What you just heard was a small piece of one of our Patreon-exclusive episodes. If you'd like to hear more, then please support us on Patreon. There's a link in the description. Thank you for listening. <laughs>